Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Kino with stemwithkino.com, and today we're going to talk about fuel systems. There's two basic types of fuel systems. One's going to be gravity-fed, and the other one is going to be fuel-injected. Now, up to this point, we've been talking about or dealing with, even in the simulation, gravity-fed, like the Cessna 152 and the Cessna 172RG. They're both gravity-fed systems, which means gravity gets the fuel to the engine, okay, or it plays a major part. Some high-wing airplanes do have pumps for redundancy uh, or just by virtue of their man the manufacturing just having some added safety factor to it. But typically the fuel tanks are up top in the wings here. All right, and each and every one of these high-wing aircraft, the fuel tanks are up top. So gravity just kind of just feeds it. Let's look at a pilot operating handbook. This is the pilot operating handbook for the aircraft we had in the last simulation was the Cessna 172RG. And let's zoom in just a little bit just so you guys can see. All right, so we basically have little transmitters in here that go to our fuel quantity indicator. And let me see... I can't, um, there we go. So we have fuel quantity indicators, and let me just give you an idea of what that looks like. Uh, cockpit, virtual, okay. Um, bang, okay. So this is typically what your transmitters are gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna send information to these fuel quantity indicators. So you can see what's going on in your left tank and your right tank. And from time to time, and actually, yeah, they're about even. Okay, but sometimes it's not uncommon for you to have like a little bit less or a little bit more on one side because you may have been executing turns or something of that nature. And for whatever reason, they might be off a little bit. Um, I'm actually going to do a real video, pre-flighting a real airplane, how I would prefer you check your fuel, because uh, me personally, um, and especially in light aircraft, I do not rely on these fuel quantity in indicators wholeheartedly, 100%. I can show you a surefire way, or I'm going to do a video showing you a surefire way to actually measure your um, your fuel. And actually, the next time you're at Home Depot or something like that, get a paint stick, like one of those sticks that you mix paint with. And I'll explain to you, uh, and I'll actually get one too prior to the video, and I'll show you how useful that they can be. Um, so these are the fuel quantity indicators uh, that are here in the schematic. All right. Um, we have our filler cap, and one of these filler caps is vented, so you don't get a vacuum. Uh, so you don't get a vacuum, create a vacuum. So these breathe, you can see the interchangeable channel here going across. And I think I mentioned to you guys the fuel vent. If you see some dripping out of it, don't, there is no, you're not running out of fuel, okay? This tank must expand and contract due to heating and cooling, okay? So sometimes the molecules of that fuel might expand and it might overfill a little bit but it's going to come out of the vent here and I'll actually show you that too as well. Uh, we have some drain valves okay, where we actually get a fuel test and I'll show you that in a video as well. Uh, these are both screened off just in case any contaminants enter the tank you know for whatever reason so they are screened off. You have another drain valve, fuel strainer, drain control, um, this part goes to the engine so when we prime the tank we actually push fuel in there now although this uh, is a high wing aircraft like I told you some gravity fed aircraft do have an auxiliary fuel pump just for safety reasons and then you also have an engine driven fuel pump as well you have a switch that operates the auxiliary fuel pump. And you have your throttle mixture control going to the engine. And uh, we can see the carburetor 
Um, this is the carburetor right here. So you have that throttle control and um, you have that uh, the throttle control up top if you looked at our carburetor video. Um, another thing to keep notice, you have a vent here which represents the white areas, the clear areas, and you have the fuel supply. So when gravity is applied to the system, it's actually you know, pushing to the engine already, and as well as the auxiliary fuel pump in the carburetor. Um, and then we have a fuel pressure gauge, because if we have a fuel pump, we're going to um, have a fuel pressure gauge, just so we know that we're not developing so much pressure in there. Um, and then you can see the lightning bolt. These are all the electrical connections. So we have a connection, which is the transmitters transmitting to the fuel quantity indicators. We have an electrical connection from it to the uh, auxiliary fuel pump. And that's it as far as electrical connections. Okay, so this is the gravity fed system. And we have a carburetor, so it is susceptible to carburetor icing. Um, so I just wanted to, here's our Cessna, gravity fed. Now, notice where the engine is, and then notice where the fuel tanks are. So that's okay. Gravity, gravity fed is good in this case. Well, sometimes you have low wing aircraft, and the fuel tanks will be right here in the wings. They're typically in the wings, and low, uh, low engine aircraft. But the engine's up here, so that means this is probably horizontally opposed, and so some way we got to get the fuel pushed up to the engine and we do that by way of um, a fuel injection system All right. so what I have here is we have our gravity fed got our tanks, our fuel selector switch, the strainer, the carburetor and the light blue indicates the fuel supply All right. well the next type of system is the fuel injection system and it's not going to blow up for me anymore so let's see if we can't go to it and see what we got aircraft fuel systems and let's give aircraftsystemstech.com is this uh, website All right. so we can see the gravity feed system which we saw this on Google images and now we have the uh, Reciprocating engine aircraft with fuel tanks located in the wings below the engine uses pumps to draw fuel from the tanks and deliver it to the engine. So just coming back, the fuel has to be drawn from the tanks and pumped up to the engine. All right, let's make sure. All right, so let's just look at some components, not you. You, all right. So we have a couple more components. We still have the tanks. We have fuel reservoir tanks. We still have a fuel selector valve. But we have this auxiliary fuel pump. That's what's going to suck the fuel out of the wings up to the and push it up to the engine. Uh, the strainer goes to the intake manifold. We have a primer. Not only do we have a regular fuel pump, but we have an engine-driven fuel pump. We have a fuel control unit. All right. And we have a flow indicator. And we have a manifold, or distributor manifold. All right. So this distributor manifold actually gets the fuel to the actual engines. And I just want to make sure um, that I hit everything. All right. So this fuel manifold, and let's just make sure, okay, we still have vented filler caps here. We have a fuel reservoir. Um, and let me see, the fuel boost pump. Okay, this provides fuel under pressure to the fuel control unit. So the pump, here's our fuel control unit. When it's off, when the engine starts, then that does the pressurized fuel to the fuel control unit. All right, but in a sense, when we're, we're not powered up, the propeller's not moving, the engine's not moving. The auxiliary fuel pump is pushing the fuel to the fuel control unit. All right. So the boost pump, it provides fuel under pressure to the fuel control unit. Okay, actually after engine start. Output pressure varies with um, engine speed. All right. Um, 
APU, okay, so auxiliary fuel pump, engine, fuel flow. All right, I wanted to talk about the manifold pressure, the fuel control unit. Uh, it meters fuel to the engine based upon the throttle position. All right, so based on the throttle, if we have a wide open or idle, it's going to push fuel harder or not as hard. Um, and then the intake manifold, okay. All right, here's our intake manifold, and this valve distributes fuel evenly to all the cylinders and promotes um, and provides fuel shutoff when the fuel mix when the fuel air mixture is in the uh, idle cutoff position. All right, so that is gravity fed versus fuel injection systems. Now, the cool thing about the fuel injection system is you don't have to worry about carburetor icing conditions. All right, because we don't have all the, the air and the humidity being a factor in um, the normal, normally aspirated situation in this situation. Um, and I need to do a little research. Okay, how are these guys aspirated? But I'll I'll get into that. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that, but there is no carburetor in this situation. So that is my spiel on gravity-fed versus fuel injection. I'll see you guys next video.